What's up, people? Welcome to the Health is Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Jason Shibley, and this is the show we talk about the relationship between your health, your wealth, and we're not just talking about the push ups and dollar bills. My co host, as usual, Bobby Jackson. What's yeah, what's up, buddy? everybody? How you doing today, man? Bobby good, Jackson good. from Fired Up Fitness. Today. Fired up. Happy to be here. I know, dude, you got some good energy today. Yep. I want to hear what this damn topic's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be a good one. So, what do we got? Yeah. What is going to be the new norm? Once we get out of the quarantine, in the fitness industry. All right. That's, that's yep. the topic of the day, and there I'm ready go. to fire it up. And I think... All right, cool. Let's even from the start, let's say, because when people say that, it it kind of implies that there's going to be bad things, right? It's all these bad changes. Oh, my God. Things are never going to go back to normal. And honestly, I think that actually some good stuff is going to come no, from that. I think the quality is coming back into the fitness world. That's okay. the sum it up, yeah. the quality not the quantity. Um, it's going to weed out the bad stuff that's happened over the past 20 years in the fitness industry. And I think we're going to get some good quality out of what's yeah. going on yeah. in, the, in new areas in the industry and old areas. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, one of the other good areas is like the technology that's being brought out for yep. home fitness too. Have you seen the, the mirror thing? The mirror thing. Mirror. Been out, now it's starting to got, crank. You know, I'm a fan of the uh, the spin bike at home thing. The all those, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like there's already been some great options for people to work out at home, and now all of a sudden it's oh damn, we kind of have to use those things now, and so people are really putting you know knocking the dust off the old treadmills and all that. You know, the people I'm virtually training. Um, you know, some of them hadn't really been using the equipment at all when they're at yeah. home, and some people have a surprising amount piled up. And all of a sudden now it's, you know, us, we've been able to look at building programs for people using equipment they already had at home. And I think that's going to open people's eyes for post-quarantine to say, oh man, okay, even if I am going to work at the gym a couple days a week, I can still get a couple good ones in at the house and kind of reinvigorate that, that home gym feel. So No, yeah, I think, I think there's, it's going to, it's going to evolve the virtual trainer more so. Which, uh, yeah. honestly, I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, I'm not just, a big fan of either. But I, I feel horribly lazy when I'm training. No matter how excited and cups of coffee I get and I got a nice program written out and bang, we're just flying through it. It's still, but I think, there's still not the touch of that in-person yeah, but, training. But, but at the end of the day, the virtual trainer, I think the 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 virtual programming, um, buying your workout programs and nutrition plans will even enhance more for those people that have already established themselves Mm -hmm. there. I think they're really going to take off. Zoom has been great for people that have never done it before. And you're seeing that start really take off. But I think the biggest thing is, is people aren't going to need um, the big groups to train with, to be motivated. I think they're going to find a rhythm um, by themselves in their living room, in the garage yeah. again, because yeah. I, I we talked off camera, but I'll bring it up now. I think uh, the CrossFitters, they're still going to be part of a community when it comes to where they get their workouts from. Mm-hmm. But some of these guys and girls have got everything in their garage or on their back porch, and they're ready to go. And they've had great workouts over the the quarantine. And I think because once they get back to their work life and their yeah. family life that's always on the go, they're going to find out that they can still get those great workouts and still be part of a community yeah. on the weekends at that box. So Yeah, that's what I'm hoping is either at least a long-lasting, you know, even better would be a permanent, uh, you know, permanent change, would be that people realizing, man, I live within a certain number of feet from a nice little bedroom or that corner of the garage, that thing I already got decked out when we moved in. And up until now, it's just been a fancy looking clothes hanger. And now it's, man, I can really knock the dust off that. Get that little killer workout in. Doesn't need to be an hour. Doesn't need to be three hours. It's Mm -hmm. get in there 20, 30 minutes, get a little work in. And hopefully that's something that people are realizing, man, I can actually do that between dinner and bed or right when I get home from work before I eat dinner or in the morning before I take my shower, after I start dripping, you know, drinking that cup of coffee, it's man, get in there. 
and just get your butt moving a little bit, get a little sweat on, get the heart rate up a few times and then move on. And it's like, even if that's just going to complement that working with a strength and conditioning coach or working with that CrossFit, you know, box or whatever, uh, you know, I know we talk about that a lot. It's that sense of community when you get into a group setting, but it's still, okay, we can still be working out, get that little bit every day. And that's yep. really going to help hopefully a lot more people and see I, results. And I also think the quality of um, one-on-one -on -one personal training is going. So away from the home, when, when you do go back to a studio like Custom Fitness mm -hmm. and Pompano, I mean, you can't wait to get all your customers back in the doors. And I think people are going to be more excited and more appreciative, um, you as a business owner and the customers as well, to get that one-on-one -on -one quality fitness program going again. Yeah. And I think, so if I go back past when I started training, one-on-one -on -one training was killing it. I mean, people, there was no group training. I yeah. mean, the first group training that I remember when I started was before P90X came out. So that virtual thing was already started back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, but people would always fall off the virtual thing. I think people are going to stay more with the virtual yeah. as well as I think they're going to appreciate the more one-on-one -on -one training um, quality. And I, th I think and there's going to be a spike in one-on-one -on -one training again. Yeah, I, I think so. I hope so, of course. But, yeah, I definitely yeah. think so as well because I think that's going to tie into the way that that person is going to work out at their house. We've yeah. had a lot of people up at Custom Fitness that either they're coming in just to learn how to use their equipment or some people say, okay, I'm going to do two, three days here, and then I still want to do one or two with my own gear at the house. They might not have as much stuff. But the movements that we're learning at Custom Fit transfer over with your own set of dumbbells or your own bands or, you know, uh, finding little alternatives to use with those other little pieces that we might not have that you have at that typical home gym that somebody built in the late 90s. So. Yeah. And then when it comes to the new norm, when it comes to group training, which you do group training at your facility as well, just it's two people. It's usually husband, yeah. wives or, or family members yeah, together. The partner training. Yeah. Partner training is good. But um, I think they're going to, one, because things have to be more spread out now when we get um, through the um, pandemic here. Yeah. But I think the biggest part of it is the quality is going to go back in small group training, and it's literally going to be small group training. Small group training is still 30 and under mm -hmm. now, which I've always hated. Um, that when you call yourself small group training, you got 30 people in your class. That's not small group training at yeah, all. Not, yeah, Sorry, that's... people, that's not. So four to nine people, anything in 10 is mm -hmm. not a small group anymore. Yeah. So I think you're going to find out these these training programs are actually going to keep it now you're going to have to run multiple um, classes at time for some of mm -hmm. these facilities and you're going to have to figure that out as a business yeah which you will and and i will that's my that's my end goal with fitness prosperity so mm -hmm. small group trainings it you're going to be able to keep people separated better and that's that's going to be number one at the beginning when we get through this yeah yeah i agree and that's you know and a lot of people kind of uh you know kind of mention that early on in those big groups too is man Everything's so dirty. Yep. I get to a piece of equipment, it's still just dripping wet, sweaty from the last person who didn't have time to wipe up. And it's, yeah, you're going to see, okay, hygiene is drastically better at those smaller, more controlled facilities. And that, you know, that had also been, you know, where Custom Fit had been shining. You know, I personally got my first flu last spring. Right. First time ever. Congratulations. I, got, I know, right? Yeah. Had to get the first one Super out of the way. Super excited. Um, and that was, you know, I'm blaming the airport. Had a couple different trips I had to take and um, and ended up getting this horrible flu. And that inspired me to really start hammering down with the hand sanitizer we already had, but the mm -hmm. Clorox wipes and spray and single-use towels more available and all these other little things um, to really crank down on that. Okay, I, God forbid, as bad of a time as I had with it, the last thing I wanted was to then bring it to the gym and give somebody else the flu at my own gym. Yeah. So, so that really helped us tighten down on some of those little things and being able to, okay, wiping up in between clients. Having, since we're one on one, it's very easy for me to follow my own client around. Yep. And when we get up off that bench, give it the spray, give it the wipe down. They set that dumbbells down. Give them the wipe down while they're getting their sip of water or moving on to the cool down, whatever it is, and just try to stay up on it so it's not doing a huge deep clean once a month. It's doing the spot cleaning every single day. Yeah. And I think uh, going on with that, I think that's the biggest thing um, that customers are going to look at. How clean is the place that they're walking into? Yep. I mean, how are they opening that front door? How clean is the place always there? Is there random traffic going where they're going to be working out? So that's where my big pet yeah. peeve is going forward with 
um, big box gyms is. I think big box gyms, I've always said this for the past five years, they're, you're going to start seeing them disappear because people working out at home. And I think this is a hidden um, nightmare for big commercial gyms and a hidden blessing for people that wow. um, to realize that they can work out by themselves and they don't need a lot of equipment to do it. Yeah. So what's going to happen is people are going to, and I'm already hearing it from customers um, through my email listing and everything, they, they want to know how clean the place is they're coming in to work out with. They want to know how how the businesses are wiping Dane down in between supersetting in commercial mm -hmm. gyms. I, I honestly don't know how they're going to figure that out without well, just limiting 50 people per hour to come in. There. And that's so, exactly it. It's that, and I can't blame them because, and which is also why I wouldn't want to have, you know, responsibility of a facility that large is you just can't. That's the time, you know, I'm not blaming it. Oh man, the box gyms are the worst. I don't have a solution for that problem. When you're dealing with a place that big and it's open gym format, so you have yeah. just members wandering around, it is physically impossible to truly keep that close eye unless you have more people cleaning than you have members. And then obviously yeah. that's not a I mean, uh, so very healthy the old, business model. The so. old school gym etiquette things kind of disappear where you let your your neighbor work in with you yeah. and stuff. That I mean, a towel's not going to stop people's I'm concerned of how clean yeah. the the air is. That they're perfect right there, and people are finally understanding that. Okay, dust and dirt in the corner is a heck of a lot different than something be infected with a virus. Yeah, having that live virus on a surface, you can't see that. That doesn't even have to be physically wet to be holding a virus. Versus that, the old dirty was, oh man, the drinking fountain has some goofy little mold around it, or, oh, there's some dust bunnies in the corner. That is the least of your problems yeah. now. It is like chemical warfare. And so you're right. I think people are going to be having a, a lot different eye on, okay, if there is that dust in the corner, what the heck does that mean about all these other surfaces that might appear clean but could have that actual virus Yeah, even on it? if you see someone right beside you cleaning up, I mean, what does it mean? What? And, that's, and that's the biggest thing, I think, if I just jump over to what I've already been hearing and what I see in the golf world is what they're doing with tee times is yeah. is awesome because they're it's, breaking them up right it, it's 12 minutes some of these oh, wow. some of these clubs down here in south florida are doing 12 minute tee times that's unheard of if you've ever been playing golf down yeah. in the winter timing in florida you're, you're teeing off as soon as that ball's hit off you're okay scooting up yeah. no they're they're separating 12 minutes yeah um, does the course hit get a big hit on a loss of how many people they can get on a course yeah but they're able to keep their the doors open and the course is open and one person per golf court, I mean, so what I think of at the gym, how are they going to do that? So put caution tape in between every yeah. treadmill? I mean, that's the easy part. They the treadmills, just, you can do that. They just keep every other piece of equipment shut down. It's like, but you still have the bathrooms and locker rooms. You still have the door, the, front door. You still have the front door. The front Everybody desk. touches the, the front, front desk. desk. When they're scanning in, putting their every drinking there. fountain. I mean, that's, but you know. And we're not trying to scare anyone away. It's no. just the reality of what other customers are already telling us in our businesses right now, what their concern is. Yeah. And that, again, that's just the tough spot. That's, you know, that's what we are saying right now. This is the whole theme of this episode is, yeah, we don't have a solution to that problem. And yep. for him not having a solution to the problem comes the evolution. In this good, bad, or indifferent, this is just the way we're going. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's so we just got to kind of try to plan ahead and plan accordingly. So what I what I honestly think is uh, what's going to happen is circuit training, small group circuit training is going to disappear because once I'm done with my dumbbells and you jump on those dumbbells, that's not going to happen anymore. It's going to be almost the aerobic mentality again where um, you get your 10-pound dumbbells, I get my 10-pound dumbbells, mm -hmm. and we use those the whole time. We can't yeah. switch. There's yeah. no switching in between a class. Yeah. After class is over, everything gets sprayed down, wiped down, and then the next people can join, and it's safe. It's had time to get cleaned up. Perfect. No yeah, worries. I think everyone's going to feel comfortable working out in that environment. But for circuit training that happens now and a lot of hit trains where they're bouncing every two minutes into a new movement that someone else was just on, that's going to take a lot of a Clorox while. spray. It's, it's going, going to take a lot of Clorox wipes. It's going to be a while before to actually do that properly. Yeah, it's going to be a while before a lot of people feel comfortable touching something else that someone else just touched. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So, again, you know, that's just the difficult part. Hopefully, people now feel like they've just got more tools in the toolbox. Yeah, to get those workouts at home, find that local personal trainer. Go take the small group classes. Go play that pickleball. Go. Go for that bike ride. Like we've been telling people forever, you just yeah. move your butt. 
Move. No, you don't have to come see me. I don't need to meet you. Just as long as I know you're moving around, being active, and just getting out there, that's that's all we need. Yes, yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing. Yeah, you hit it right on the head. Is just stay moving. Stay moving. It doesn't. Yeah, you can be part of culture. You can. Facebook's great. Email connections are great. You can still communicate. Everyone's working out. Everyone's going on a jog at the same time mm -hmm. after work. You guys can all start at the same time. Okay, you start 30 seconds. I'll start right behind you. If I end up past you, I probably will because I'm really fast. Even for a fat guy, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty fast. fast. Super fast for a fat yeah. guy. But um, <laughs> but it's like tea times. Yeah. I mean, you can still have running groups out there and just separate each other and do this. And it's, it's, I don't think that's going to be a long-term thing, mm -hmm. but I think for a short-term wise, I think you're going to see a lot of people, okay, space out. And that's if, good. Yeah, see, that's that that minimizes potential exposure. It's yep. not a it's not a one hundred percent solution, but it certainly does a good job of just being responsible. That's the thing. It's just be as responsible as you can. Clean up after yourself. That's another big one too. It's if I am in that line to work out, it shouldn't be oh, that guy behind me better wipe up. It's no, that's my job. Mm -hmm. Don't be lazy. Get my stupid little towel, spray that stuff on there, and wipe it down properly. That's I got to take responsibility for me, and hopefully that next person does the same thing. And if we can all do that, yeah, I think just the gym put on our big yeah. pants. I think the do gym the right thing and just keep moving on. It's that we all need to be working out. Yeah, I think everybody that, needs to be active. I think that gym etiquette's really gonna. It's either gonna turn to. A, Turn the corner and actually you're going to appreciate someone wiping out in front of you and you're mm -hmm. actually going to wait yeah, until they're done wiping it down with their three sets and people are going to move a little faster or it's going to get really nasty really fast. Yeah, that's... With yeah. people being impatient, not not wiping down quick enough, someone doesn't think they did a good job but other person think that was great. I mean, what do you mean? Yeah, so that's... I think there's going to be hiccups in the road but, you know, like Bobby said, the whole point of this podcast today is to make sure that... We're going to do the right things. We're going to separate ourselves, and there's going to be these new trends for the for a long time um, in the fitness world. Um, and that's going to get us through this. Some are going to be some great changes too. So I'm excited to see those. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching or listening to today's episode. We'd love if you leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give us a five star review, like us, share us, and follow all the guests from today's episode. And remember, if it was easy, it'd be damn cheesy.